In this video on bearing surfaces in total hip arthroplasty, we will learn about the classification of bearing surfaces, factors affecting wear characters of the bearing surfaces, biological responses to the wear particles, and ways to modulate these responses. Commonly used bearing surfaces in India are metal on polyethylene, ceramic on polyethylene, and ceramic on ceramic. Since polyethylene is much softer than either the metal or ceramic, these two articulations are also called hard on soft. Ceramic on ceramic is also called hard on hard. Since the withdrawal of ASR hip resurfacing during 2009-10, metal on metal hips are rarely performed in India. Metal on ceramic has poor wear properties and are also not routinely used. Metal used for hip articulation in metal on polyethylene is cobalt, chromium and molybdenum alloy. Metals not commonly used are titanium and stainless steel because both have a high surface roughness. In addition, titanium has a poor scratch resistance which predisposes it for further surface roughness. Although it is one of the preferred metal for cup and stem manufacturing, titanium is not used in making femoral heads. Currently used ceramic is the fourth generation alumina zirconia composite, also called zirconia toughened alumina. Let's look at the tribology of the hard on soft bearing surfaces. Lubrication in hard on soft is boundary lubrication. Wear is mostly due to adhesive wear. We know that the coefficient of friction of metal on polyethylene is the highest. The surface roughness of cobalt chromium head is due to its aspirides. Ra, the arithmetic average of the surface heights of these aspirides, is 0.02 microns. These aspirides flow into the polyethylene and cause wear. The coefficient of friction in ceramic on poly is better than that of metal on poly. Pits on the surface of the ceramic head is responsible for its surface roughness. Ra of these pits is 0.006 microns. The polyethylene particles are generated in beads and are about the size of half a micron. These particles arise from the head cup articulation or from the cup acetabular junction, also called backside wear. Polyethylene wear particles are phagocytosized by the macrophages, which release inflammatory cytokines that helps to recruit more macrophages in a positive feedback loop. Cytokines also stimulate osteoblasts to secrete rank ligand which activate osteoclasts by binding to the rank receptors. Activated osteoclasts are responsible for osteolysis and implant loosening. Polyethylene exists in two forms, crystalline and amorphous. The crystalline form contributes to the mechanical strength of the polyethylene. An optimum percentage of crystallinity in a polyethylene is 45 to 65%. Any reduction in crystallinity makes the polyethylene prone for mechanical failure and cracks. Amorphous component of the polyethylene undergoes cross-linking when irradiated with gamma rays in an inert atmosphere. Cross-linking improves the wear properties of the polyethylene. Reduced amorphous form leads to increased wear and particulate debris. Multiple steps involved in polyethylene processing affect its wear properties. We can divide them on these headings. Manufacturing, sterilization, irradiation, and shelf life. Of all the manufacturing processes, polyethylene manufactured by direct compression molding gives the best wear characters. Ram bar extrusion is another method. An important point to note here is additives like calcium stearate used as anti-caking agent reduces the consolidation and increases the oxidation of the polyethylene. Other methods of manufacturing 
are largely historical. Next, let's see how polyethylene sterilization methods affects its wear characters. Polyethylene can be sterilized by low-dose irradiation, gas plasma using hydrogen peroxide or ethylene oxide. When the polyethylene is gamma irradiated with 2.5 to 5 megahertz of radiation, it ruptures the polyethylene bonds in the amorphous areas and create free radicals. In the absence of oxygen, these free radicals create crosslink with adjacent chains and hence have better wear properties. In the presence of oxygen, the free radicals do not crosslink but lead to degradation of the polyethylene chains, which is termed chain scission. Such a polyethylene possesses poor wear properties. Polyethylene sterilized by gas plasma or by ETO do not produce free radicals and hence no cross-linking. Such a polyethylene has moderate wear properties. It's important to note that following sterilization by gamma irradiation, polyethylene is packed in vacuum or in an inert atmosphere. Since uh, polyethylene sterilization by irradiation exhibited these properties, a concept of medium and high cross-linked polyethylene was perceived. The main advantages were better wear properties and lesser and smaller wear particles. However, the main disadvantages are reduction in the material properties like toughness, ductility, tensile strength and fatigue strength. It also produces excessive free radicals and makes it more accessible for oxidation and chain session. In order to overcome this problem, highly irradiated polyethylene can be treated by melting or heat annealing. Melting is heating the polyethylene above its melting point and heat annealing is heating it below its melting point. The main advantages of melting is that we can remove almost all the free radicals. However, melting can also reduce the crystallinity and we know that reduced crystallinity reduces the mechanical properties of the polyethylene. Heat annealing, on the other hand, maintains the crystallinity, but it may not remove all the oxygen-derived free radicals. To do so, we will have to run multiple cycles of heat annealing. In fact, many modern highly cross-linked polyethylene are manufactured by rambar extrusion without additives, cross-link with high-dose irradiation, ETO sterilization, and are stored in inert gases. Other methods of removing excess free radicals are adding antioxidants like vitamin E or mechanically compressing the polyethylene. We'll briefly cover a concept called catastrophic wear of the polyethylene in total knee replacement. Unlike polyethylene wear debris induced osteolysis and failure in total knee replacement, a catastrophic wear is a macroscopic failure of the insert. There are multiple contributing factors for catastrophic wear. However, relevant points for this discussion are polyethylene manufacturing, sterilization, and storage. If polyethylene is irradiated and not treated for removal of free radicals either by melting or heat annealing, then free radical accumulation happens. If package is permeable to oxygen, stored for too long on the shelf as in a rare size insert or a prosthesis, an atmosphere of chain scission is created. This, along with mechanical and surgical causes, lead to macroscopic subsurface delamination and failure of the polyethylene. This is called catastrophic wear. Now let's move to the hard-on-hard -hard bearing surface. Hard-on-hard -hard bearing surface currently used in India is ceramic and ceramic, which produces ceramic wear debris. Metal on metal is currently not used in India and the problem of metal debris has come down significantly. 
Key advantages of ceramic and ceramic articulation is its low wear rate and biological inertness. They do not elicit inflammation and the body does not mount any immune responses or become metaplastic. There are certain limitations with ceramic implants. A ceramic cup and head are more expensive than polyethylene and cobalt chromium bearing surfaces. Fracture, stripe line, squeaking are other problems which are related to each other one way or the other. And let's go through them now. In order to understand why ceramic head and linus fracture, we need to know three of its material properties. Ceramic has a steep stress strain curve, that means it has a good ability to resist bending and it is considered a stiffer material. Stress strain curve of ceramics have a very small plastic zone. This means it hardly ever undergoes any plastic deformation before breaking. Therefore, it is a brittle material. Area under the stress strain curve represents material toughness. Toughness indicates ability of a material to resist cracking and breaking under stress. Area under the stress strain curve of ceramic is small and it has limited ability to resist cracking. Therefore, it's not a tough material. Let's look at the prevention and treatment of ceramic fractures. The fourth generation ceramics have better material properties and their use has reduced the incidence of fractures significantly. Use of a suitably large head, a good head neck ratio, and avoiding skirt also reduce fracture incidences. A good surgical technique helps to get correct alignment avoid impingement and hence reduce the risk of fracture. Even if only one of the components is fractured, both the ceramic components need to be replaced. The replaced ceramic head should have a metal jacket to avoid a refracture from point loading over previous metal corrosion and wear of the femoral neck. A stripe line or a stripe wear is a narrow area of excessive ceramic wear and roughness. It is seen along the acetabular edge and the corresponding articulating area of the femoral head. Similar to ceramic fractures, the proposed causes are edge loading due to attempted movement beyond the levering range, rim impingement, malalignment, and recurrent subclinical subluxation. Stripe wear, when leads to failure of the prosthesis, will need revision and realignment of the prosthesis. Squeaking is an audible noise emanating from the artificial joints, especially with ceramic implants. It is more common in ceramic on ceramic compared to ceramic on polyethylene. Clinically, it does not cause pain or reduced range of movement or any other functional disabilities. It is also not known to be associated with osteolysis or soft tissue complications. However, it can be of nuisance value and some patients do seek treatment for this. The exact cause of squeaking is still not known. Possible contributors are similar to stripe wear or a ceramic fracture like malpositioning, especially increased acetabular abduction angle, impingement, edge loading, subclinical subluxation, and three-body wear. Implant resonance with contribution from stem alloy materials could also amplify the noise and create squeaking. Patients with high BMI are more likely to experience squeaking. Coming to treatment, if the implants are malaligned, then it needs surgical correction and change of bearing surfaces. If there is no malalignment, then the patients can be counseled and it can be left alone. Otherwise, it may need 
change of bearing surfaces. Since the time of withdrawal of ASR hip resurfacing during 2009-10, the use of metal on metal articular surface is almost obsolete. However, there are patients who still have the old hip resurfacing and it's important to know the basics of metal debris and their biological responses. Metal wear particles are much smaller in size, larger in number and have less volumetric wear and linear wear. The biological responses to metal wear particles are mediated through T cells. Hypersensitivity is caused by nickel and it is usually seen early after implantation. It is a classical delayed hypersensitivity response involving CD4 plus helper T cells. A constant dull ache is a common symptom. Treatment is revision with a compatible material. Particulate induced T cell response is caused by cobalt and chromium. It takes a few years to develop and it is due to cobalt and chromium forming complexes with transferrin and other serum proteins that stimulate T cells to release cytokines. Cytokines initiate a rank rank ligand process. Particulate induced T cell responses are more pronounced in women and it is postulated that estrogens facilitate this response. In soft tissues, the above pathological process presents as pseudotumors as seen in ultrasonography or an MRI. In bone, it causes osteolysis. Histologically, it is called aseptic lymphocyte-dominant vasculitis-associated lesion or ALVAL reaction. When this happens, it is treated by removal of implants, radical debridement and revision with other bearing surfaces. We have now come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.